they brought me out here because uh, I can solve a Rubik's Cube, I guess, as well as 77 other people here today. Uh, what is the basic goal, to have the same color on each side? Yeah, pretty much. Um, well, actually, the pieces, each piece has the stickers attached to it, so you're pretty much trying to put the pieces in the right place. Uh, you're not trying to move around stickers, you're moving around pieces. So when all the pieces are in the right place, all the colors are solved. Puzzle fanatics of all ages converge under the cube of the Discovery Science Center in Santa Ana to simultaneously solve the Rubik's Cube, one of the most fascinating and frustrating inventions of the 20th century. This is our 10-year birthday party. We've been here in Santa Ana for 10 years now. It's a very exciting event for us because we are known for our giant cube, and so we have decided to partner with a number of Rubik's Cube speed solvers, and we have uh, set up a competition all day, and then we have just broken a Guinness World Record for the most people solving Rubik's Cubes in one place at one time. So we are so excited about that, on our birthday, no less. Wow, what is that record? Uh, the previous record was 75 people solving in one hour, and we have broken it today. We actually had, um, we're still in the hour, so I'm not going to give a final count yet, uh, but we had 77 people solve in only the first 20 minutes. So that's an amazing uh, feat, I think, for the Science Center. Do you think this has something to do with the fact that we're in California? It could be. You know, the, the Rubik's Cube is a pretty universal thing. It's very cool, you know, especially for those of us who like retro games and stuff like that. It's a, a great um, game for your brain. It helps you bring your brain to stay active through the years. And, um, you know, it's just nice to do logic puzzles and memory games like that. So we actually take that approach here at the Science Center. We're all about hands-on learning. So when we do events like this, and we do an event similar to this once a year, we incorporate uh, UCI brain scientists, neurobiologists, and they come out with actual human brains and talk about what your mind is doing when you're trying to solve something like the Rubik's Cube. I wonder what it's doing when you're being interviewed. I know my mind is everywhere right now. <laughs> I have little kids crawling all around. I can kind of see them out the corner of my eye. Yes, my brain is everywhere. <laughs> After the whistle blows, dozens of cube solvers begin the painstaking task of twisting and turning their cubes to match the colors on all sides. For some, it takes a bit of time to employ the complex system of calculations that will complete their cube, while others solve it in just a few minutes. But they are all surpassed by a renowned cube solver whose average time clocks in at a brisk 15 seconds. I first became interested in the Rubik's Cube about five years ago. My brother came home from a summer camp. He was 19, uh, no, I was 19 back then. He was 14 and he had learned how to solve the Rubik's Cube. And I was interested, so I asked him to teach me. And then one thing led to another. I tried to catch him and never quite got there. But um, you know, it was my brother who got me interested in the Rubik's Cube. Uh, and so that led into what? Uh, meeting other people and showing people how to do it or what? Well, from that, uh, I had some friends at my school. I went to college at Caltech, and they got interested as well. So we formed a club and started hosting competitions. And from there, we kind of built a global network of people. So we now, you know, we, we talk with people all around the world about how to do this and, you know, it's a constant struggle pretty much to improve and just have some fun. I want to ask you what the secret is, but uh, how does someone find out uh, how to uh, accomplish whatever it is you want to accomplish with a Rubik's Cube? Well, there's no secret. Rubik's Cube isn't, actually, isn't quite like magic. You know, in the magic community, people kind of keep things themselves. But there's no secret to the Rubik's Cube. You just, there are methods online on the internet that you can find. Barnes & Noble is selling a, a Rubik's Cube with a DVD that you can buy that gives you the solution. Um, and you, you know, if you can approach it analytically if you want to figure it out yourself unaided. You just have to pretty much pay attention to where the pieces are moving and try to come up with a way to accomplish small goals without disrupting you know, what you've done before. Now I imagine that uh, one of the goals of uh, people interested is to do it as quickly as possible. Uh, certainly. Um, you know, if you can do something in five minutes, why not try to do it in three minutes, one minute down to 20 seconds, 15 seconds, 11 seconds. Uh, people out here at the competition are pretty much trying to solve the cube as fast as they can. What is the uh, Guinness World Record? Um, the world record for the fastest single solve right now is 7.08 seconds. Seven something seconds? 7.08 seconds. It's held by a 
Eric Akers. He's got a hard name to pronounce. Uh -huh. um, he's he's uh, he's from the Netherlands, um, and he is he's one of the world's fastest. Did you ever meet him? I, I have met him before. Did you uh, challenge him at all? No, I didn't challenge him. He's way faster than I am. My he averages probably about uh, 11 to 12 seconds on the Rubik's cube. Um, I average about 15 to 16. 15 to 16 seconds. Uh, yes. So the at that you know when at that speed three seconds is a lot. Yeah. On an off day, what do you do? Uh, today it was around, you know, in the 20s, so, uh, you know, hands are cold, who knows what happens, right? A chilly January temperature of 68 degrees slows Tyson's performance down to 25 seconds, sluggish for his normal cube-solving speed. Inside the Discovery Science Center, a Rubik's Cube competition attracts contestants eager to show off their speed-solving skills. For this unique competition, participants are timed on their ability to solve randomly scrambled cubes in as short a time as possible. Yes, that's Rubik's Cube speed solving. So we actually have people here, I'll give you a hint, we have one of the um, one of the world record holders for how fast you can solve a Rubik's Cube, but we also have the fastest female blindfolded speed solver in the world. So she starts off, hits the timer, takes a look at the Rubik's Cube when it's all mixed up, puts her blindfold on, and then solves it in about a minute and a half, completely blindfolded, not being able to see what she's doing. It's fascinating. So it's just a, a kind of um, a way to teach science. They're, they're using algorithms to solve the Rubik's Cube, um, and they're solving it in under a minute inside. So we can definitely go take a look at that. It's, it is truly a sight, I have to tell you. You know what? I couldn't do that. <laughs> I know, I couldn't do it in probably a month, you know, but they can do it in under a minute. It's quite impressive. It's amazing. If so, somebody comes up to you and asks you, uh, say, how do you do that? Uh, what do you tell them? Um, well, yeah, the Rubik's Cube spreads pretty much like a virus. You know, yeah. it spreads very quickly. Um, someone comes up and asks me, you know, I can't explain to you how to solve the Rubik's Cube in five minutes. If you give me an hour of your time, I can teach you to do it. Uh, I understand that there's, uh, uh, there's some sort of... Uh, self-satisfaction of uh, doing this. Uh, what's it like for you? Well, for me it was really nice um, being able to uh, to kind of pr push the limits of blindfold solving back in 2005. There, there are people out there who are much faster than me now, uh, but it was really nice to be a part of the community, you know, working to pretty much see what uh, the human mind is capable of. Exploring what the human mind is capable of is exactly the goal of the Discovery Science Center and for the many impressionable minds who venture inside its famous cube. What are some of the uh, most interesting uh, aspects of the center? It would definitely be, you know, working with such young people before they make career choices and before they, they get out and see the rest of the world, trying to help them to understand that science and math, engineering, those are all, you know, they can be really fun when applied to a, in a career. So, um, you know, a lot of people have um, ideas of pocket protectors and such when you talk about engineering or scientists or something like that, but we try to showcase the kind of the cooler side of science here and to, and to show that there are people out there with outstanding careers and, um, and hopefully inspire some of our Southern California students to do the same thing. You know, Julie, I find it a, a bit strange, but very pleasing that I'm standing under a cube watching people play with cubes. <laughs> yes, and it, it is a quite visual event, I have to say, today. <laughs> and uh, to add to that, you know, if behind me, the viewers can probably see there's a dinosaur right behind us. So, um, yeah, you never know what you're going to come across here at Discovery Science Center, but that's kind of how we like it. We like to kind of stir the imagination up and try to get people interested in, in science that's all around us. So I now have a little toddler, and he comes here with me on weekends or something when we're looking for something to do. And it's just, it really is a family-friendly environment. It's a safe environment for kids. It's a fun place for parents to take their children, so it's a wonderful place. To experience this fascinating world of science and mathematics, which can reveal answers to solving puzzles like the Rubik's Cube, visit the Discovery Science Center, located in Santa Ana, California.